Welcome to the Pine Hosting file management page. In the files page, you'll get access to all of your server files. From here, you can upload files, edit files, create folders, delete and search, as well as a lot of other things that we're gonna cover in this video. From here, you can easily view your files. For example, you can go into the server folder, unturned. You can then use the breadcrumbs here to go back to wherever you'd like or back to the home directory. And that's about it for viewing files. Moving on, we have uploading files. There's a couple ways you can upload files with the Pine panel. To begin with, we have the upload section at the top right where you can either upload files or a folder. Alternatively, you can just drag and drop files from your computer. So for example, I'm gonna drag and drop a folder from my computer over here. As you can see, it will start uploading. Once the upload's completed, you'll see that I have a folder called upload file with a file inside called test.txt. This is a unique feature to our panel as most hosts don't allow you to upload folders whole. With Pine Hosting, you can easily drag single files or a whole folder and I'll upload them all at once. You can keep track of the progress with the bar at the top here. Moving on, we've got creating files or directories. So to do that, you can create a directory with this big button over here. Obviously a directory is a folder. So test folder, click create. And now we have test folder. You can then also create your own files for whatever reason, if you wanted to create your own text file here, you can just create it and then save it as text.txt, create file. And then you'll see if we go back to our container, we've got text.txt over here. Moving on to one of our most powerful features, we have the search bar at the top left here. From here, you can search for any file, folder, or string within any files. And like many other hosts, we don't just search for file names, we search in files to look for a matching string. So for example, that text file that we made earlier, text.txt, we've got the text here, text file here. If we go back to our search and we run a search, you'll see it actually detects the text file and shows us the text highlighted. This is a very unique feature and it allows a lot of possibilities. You can search the whole folder, for example, if we wanted to search for log. You'll see here it shows you all the results of log, including files that have log in the name, folders with log in it, or files that have log in the actual content. From this page, you can also edit the file, which brings us onto the next section, which is the file editing page. As you can see here, our file editor shows you a summary of the file. It's a bit hard to see there, but at the top right, it shows you a summary, which you can easily scroll through, especially for large files. And then it also shows you the file in a nice VS style code editor. You can use keyboard shortcuts such as Control F to bring up find and replace, match case. There's a lot of different things that this offers. Another thing to note is that our text editor automatically detects the file type you're using. For example, if we have a JSON file like this, it will automatically select JSON at the bottom here and format it correctly. And it's also got syntax highlighting in case you make any mistakes. For example, if we remove this over here, you'll see it highlights it in red and you can click it to view the exact problem. You'll notice it also highlights it in red over here, so you can easily find the errors in your config file. Moving back to the files page, we have this calculator icon that is shown next to all the folders. This is useful to determine the folder size. What this will do is it'll go through all the subfolders and files and calculate the size of them to show you the total size of the directory. So for example, if we just run this on logs here, you'll see it's 38.32 kilobytes. This is super useful if you're trying to find a folder that might have a bunch of large files in and you wanna clean up some disk space. Moving on to the more advanced features, that all comes from the three little dots on the right of each file. From here, you're given the option to rename files. That's pretty self-explanatory. You can move them as well. This allows you to move them forwards and backwards into directories. For example, if we wanted to move this config folder, we could move it into new folder config. And now if we go to new folder, the config file will be in there along with all the content that it originally had. To move a file or folder backwards into a directory, like for example, right now, we're gonna move the config back out of new folder and back into the home container. We can do this by going move, adding a forward slash and two dots before that. You'll see here the new location will be container and then it'll put the config folder there. We click move, we go back to container and there are configures. Next up, we have permissions. This is quite advanced and generally you're not gonna to need to touch it, but if you know what you're doing, you can change your file permissions. Some plugins or mods might need that done. When you're viewing a file, you have the ability to copy the file. All this does is creates a copy with the same name. This is a great way just to back up a file if you wanna make some edits to it. Next up, we have the ability to archive and unarchive files. So for example, I've got the servers folder selected here, which I'd like to archive the whole thing. So let's just do that quickly. As you can see, this creates an archive over here. This is a great way if you wanna download files or if you wanna upload your own archives, you can do that. Then once you've got the archive file, you can do the exact same thing in reverse and unarchive the file. This will obviously unzip it and all the content will go back into where it was. If for whatever reason you wanna download a file onto your local PC, you can do that as well. For example, if we wanna download licenses.txt, we just go here, select download, 
and it will let you save the file to your PC. And then lastly, we have deleting. This lets you delete a folder or a file. Obviously, make sure you've selected the correct folder or file when you delete it, as you won't be able to recover it without a backup otherwise. And the final feature of the file management page is the mass actions. From here, you can select the folders or files you'd like to work on, or select them all, or unselect them all, using this button at the top left. And you can move them, archive them all in bulk, or delete them all in bulk. And that covers the basics for the file manager page. Obviously, we might be adding more features to this page as our panel progresses, but the general idea will always stay the same. As usual, if you need any assistance, feel free to open a ticket and our team will be happy to assist.